Good morning, I'm Dr. Memeo and we are going to speak today about Tillar Crohn-Angiocarcinoma and gallbladder cancer. Uh, for analyze this uh, kind of pathology, we will uh, consider all the data that are in the last report of uh, French Association of Surgery, in which there are more than 40 centers with uh, 2,000 uh, patients that were uh, resected and transplanted, most of them 70% uh, after 1998. So for, uh, for this kind of tumor, we have two uh, different situations. We have intrahepatic uh, cholangiocarcinoma and extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. We are going to speak about the extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. It means the, um, the one who occurs in the bile duct. It's uh, usually a small lesion who needs a major resection associated with a high morbidity and mortality. So this tumor uh, represents less than 3% of gastrointestinal cancer with uh, more than 2,000 cases per year in France with an extremely high mortality, with only curative treatment uh, with surgery, who is possible uh, in few patients. Uh, and it's a very complex surgery due to the anatomy of the hepatic hilum and to the extended invasion of this uh, pathology. And most of the time, uh, an exp uh, uh, laparoscopic exploration could be necessary to explore before uh, performing surgery. When we speak about the complexity of the uh, anatomy, we are uh, speaking about the position of the uh, biliary convergence, who is uh, in the right part of the hepatic hilum. And as we see in this picture, we have the uh, right hepatic artery that passes usually behind the bile duct. And in case of cancer, we can have an invasion of the hepatic artery and of the um, portal vein that could change the strategy and uh, the, the way to approach this pathology to obtain a satisfying oncological result. So uh, the diagnosis is usually associated with a jaundice in 16% uh, uh, of cases or with cholangitis in 10% of cases. So it, um, in radiology we can see, uh, we can discover this pathology if associated uh, to the dilatation of the bile duct. It used to be a fibrotic tumor with the separation of the left and the right bile duct in the intrahepatic portion and uh, associated with an um, atrophy of the uh, size of the liver in which the tumor is uh, present. So in this kind uh, of uh, tumor we can uh, recognize four different class, type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4 uh, in function of the extension of the, uh, of the hepatic mass. In this, uh, in this picture, as you see in the right one, we have the dilatation of the left and the right one, but the convergence is uh, respected. In the, this image on the MRI, we can see the right and the left kind of this uh, cancer that is called Klatskin uh, type 3A in case of uh, uh, right tumor and the Klatskin 3B in case of left invasion of the bile duct. And uh, type 4 is uh, in case uh, in which the second bifurcation is invited to on the left and on the right side. So uh, there are some uh, other pathologies that are mimicking uh, the, the cause of this tumor. We have a benign healer stenosis, like post-traumatic or post-surgery stenosis, primary or secondary sclerotant cholangitis, uh, autoimmune cholangitis, Mer Merizzi syndrome, and portal cavernoma. It's possible that other malignant healer stenosis could uh, simulate this kind of pathology, um, something like external lymph node compression or less fermentum carcinosis due to other pathology, or uh, metastatic compression on the hilum uh, from secondary lesion from other cancer. So the preparative management is uh, related to the possibility and necessity to drain uh, the liver and to uh, obtain the best possibility to avoid the cholangitis and to avoid the uh, atrophy of the liver. So um, endoscopic percutaneous drainage is being uh, debated in view of uh, uh, surgical resection. In case of insufficient remnant liver, we can proceed to a portant veil embolization of the site in which the tumor is, in way to obtain a sufficient part of the volume um, of the liver who will remain. So there is an evolution in the concept of biliary drainage uh, because first of all Nimura uh, supposed to drain all the excluded sector. It means the sector that will be uh, removed with the resection in way to treat the possibility to have uh, cholangitis. And secondly, um, Professor Cherki uh, supposed that it was the best reason was not to drain and uh, Professor Macucci uh, supposed recently to drain the remnant liver in way to obtain 
uh, the best uh, possibility to the, 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 the liver who remains uh, to be not uh, infected. In the last uh, uh, analysis done by the French Association of Surgery in 2009, we uh, passed to a, an aptitude in which it's, uh, the drainage is performed case by case. In this series, 60% of patients were drained, 50% endoscopically and 70% uh, uh, with the plastic stent. 29% developed complication, with 5% of them there was severe complication. Uh, cholangitis uh, was present in 58% of patients. Preparative uh, bilirubin after the drain was at 90 millimol per liter, and 65% uh, of patients had the bilirubin superior to 50 millimol per liter before the drainage. So this is the difference in mortality of uh, the patient who were drained and who were not drained, and we see that there is no difference, but when we analyze in details for right and left hepatectomy, we see that there is a difference in terms of mortality and no mortality. If we consider the overall survival of the French series, we have a five-year overall survival at 56 percent in, in a treated patient. Is there a place for this kind of pathology, for unresectable pathology for transplantation? Uh, there are some protocols who describe a global uh, disease-free survival at 10 years of 24 percent with a disease-free survival at 20 percent. Uh, we have to say that the criteria for transplantation are really strict and not all patients that are unresecable will be included in this protocol. So, um, which is the role of the exploratory laparoscopy? Exploratory laparoscopy, it is uh, the necessity to detect if there is a presence of carcinosis, uh, if there is no lesion in the remnant liver and it would be explored with the uh, ultrasound. Uh, if had the necessity to see there is absence of uh, lymph node spread in the hilum and if there is a normal aspect of a round ligament and a less remnant to, to avoid to have carcinology. In case of presence of uh, anthrabdominal uh, liquid, we have to verify that the cytology is negative for the carcinosis. So actually we can identify an evolution in favor of a right hepatectomy due to the fact that there are two kinds of major uh, changement. The first one is the technical reason, the second one is the oncological reason. The technical reason is the consideration that um, a right portal uh, vein embolization is easier, at the same time an extended right hepatectomy compared to left uh, one is easier too, and there is an, e uh, an easier access to the segment one. Uh, um, if we suppose uh, to have a uh, hepatic ostomy and with a reconstruction, the left bile duct is longer and uh, uh, more friendly for reconstruction. Left orthal vein is easier to uh, dissect. The second uh, concept is the oncological reason. Uh, they are the uh, developing the concept of circumference serial margin and the longitudinal margin. Both them are inserted in the Neuhaus concept in which. Uh, to have the best oncological treatments for this kind of pathology, we have to uh, apply the no-touch technique in which no uh, contact will be with the tumor and we will perform a resection of the uh, bile duct up to uh, the left bile duct in case we're supposed to have uh, extended right hepatectomy with resection of the portal vein uh, and uh, sparing of the left hepatic artery. In this way, we will perform a hepatic ostomy and a reconstruction with the terminal terminal anastomosis of the portal vein, and uh, um, this will achieve, as demonstrated in this serial, the best result in oncological term. If we pass to gallbladder cancer, uh, we have an incidence uh, mm, that is about uh, 0.2 up to 3% uh, in cholecystectomies uh, in the world. It's the fifth cause of malignancy of gastrointestinal pathology. It's extremely poor prognosis with a five-year overall survival at 5%. And uh, most of cases, it's uh, an incidental diagnosis after cholecystectomy in 75% of cases. The most uh, important risk factor are gender uh, in female uh, patients with obesity and smoking patients and um, the presence of uh, pathology in the gallbladder who can uh, allow the beginning of uh, the inflammatory process and will go up to cancer. So gallstone, chronic cholecystitis, and porcelain gland bladder, or is it also possible in case of biliopancreatic maljunction? As uh, seen in uh, this tumor classification, we can identify four development of the cancer from uh, T0 up to T4. Uh, the most important aspect of this cancer is the invasion of the adjacent, adjacent organ, like liver or um, peritoneum 
and uh, the intraluminal extension of the pathology can spread up to lymph node invasion and systematic dis dissemination and uh, carcinosis. So we have usually uh, in front of two situations, uh, the situation in which a intraoperative diagnosis is done, it means when we operate the patient we discover the cancer or postoperative diagnosis on the final pathology. In case of intraoperative diagnosis, it happens, it happens in one case uh, up for mm, the diagnosis based on signs of malignancy during resection or opening the examination of the specimen after resection. Mm, the most important thing is to do during this resection is to avoid excessive manipulation of the gallbladder and of the lesions that are close to the gallbladder in the, uh, in the liver and uh, very important is to avoid uh, the bile spillage for the dissemination of the cancer in the peritoneum. The, so the cases in which we need to extend the resection uh, that cannot be performed initially is in one patient who have an alterate performance status with the histological diagnosis that is done uh, on, is not done on frozen section. Uh, if we don't know the um, extension of the stage uh, on the oncological uh, classification of the uh, gallbladder if we have no preoperative imaging and uh, if there is uh, a high risk of common bile duct injury and lymphadenectomy. So we had to uh, postpone the hepatic resection. So if uh, one step surgery is not possible we should not try to perform an incomplete procedure and the second step will be performed uh, in 10 days. If the surgery is possible we have the um, possibility to perform an extended cholecystectomy with lymphadenectomy uh, who compared to uh, the two-step surgery has no difference. The, if we add, this is the second case, a diagnosis on final pathology on the surgical spacement uh, after, the, so after the cholecystectomy, it happens in about 75% of cases. Uh, we had to study the patient with an imaging uh, CT scan, MRI, MRCP, and with biology, with the CA99 uh, value, and um, we have to check the cystic duct margin resection. If uh, e we um, identify some poor prognosis factor as uh, gallbladder perforation, incomplete resection, and uh, uh, no use of resurrect during the laparoscopic resectomy, this can influence negatively the oncological result of the resection. So in which case we had to perform the reintervention. Uh, reintervention is performed in less than 50% of patients and uh, patients are operated a second time in 42% of cases for T2 tumors and 37% for T3 tumors. During the second operation the, uh, from 50 to 70% of patients have a uh, residual tumor on the uh, specimen. This impact the survival uh, with the uh, reduction of survival to 24 to 37% if residual uh, cancer is on the second uh, operation and uh, it's up to 69 to 85% if no residual tumor is on the second uh, is present on the second operation. Up to 15% of patients show a uh, non-resectable lesion in the second intervention. So uh, which is the timing for the intervention? We have no consensus about this. The uh, literature generally told about 30 days in early stage. So if we, we would like to have the second operation, it will be done within 10 days and uh, um, it is done to avoid the inflammatory inflammation that is initially present after the first uh, resection. So uh, in any case, it must be performed within six weeks. So the, which is the eligibility for second operation, which kind of patient need the second operation? So the, it's not indicated in case of T1 tumors, uh, in which is a guarantee a 95 up to 100% of uh, overall survival if uh, uh, we have a R0 resection. It must be performed in T1B tumors, uh, in which survival varies from 42 up to 100%. Uh, it uh, will be done in T2 tumors and in the, uh, could be offered, but it's not uh, mandatory in T3 tumors and in T4 tumors, in which we have demonstrated that there is no difference if resection is performed or not. Which patient are eligibility from second operation in case of uh, uh, positive of the lymph node? Uh, it's very important to say that lymph node is not, uh, is not implicated in the decision of not to perform the second operation. So uh, the most important thing is to obtain an R0 resection. There are some special say cases in which positive aortic or mesenteric lymph node uh, 
can be considered as distant metastasis, and in this case, unluckily, we have a, a five-year overall su survival at zero percent. So this is uh, um, the French experience uh, on this uh, pathology with 298 patients with a median age of 64 years, and uh, the median time interval we fear between cholecystectomy and re-resection was 40 on date with a morbidity of 37 percent and mortality of 3 percent. The result uh, shown that if we perform the re-resection for all pathology, uh, we have better result than compared to non-resection with uh, re-resection patient with a T1, uh, in case of T1 uh, bladder cancer, 100 percent uh, of survival, T2 at 62 percent, T3 at 90 percent, and T4 at 0 percent. So what kind of resection? Usually it's very debated in literature. We can have a simple larger resection of gallbladder bed in about 3 cm of thickness and the lymphadenectomy compared usually to a zebatectomy who, uh, with the um, resection of common bile duct and, of the, and the resection of the segment who are close to the gallbladder in segment 4A and segment B uh, associated to a lymphadenectomy. In which case we could uh, perform a common bile duct resection if the carcinoma or dysplasia are, are present on the cystic duct on frozen section, if uh, a, mal a biliopatriotic maljunction is present on the collegial cyst. Mm, and uh, the other question is what about the port side resection in case of laparoscopic cholecystectomy? So what about the result of the French series? We have T2 gallbladder cancer in 84 patients. Uh, with the rare resection uh, performing 67 patients, and we have a better survival for patients who were re resected. With a uh, survival rate for good bladder, better resection was 62%, and the resection of segment 4B and 5 at 59%, so without any significant difference for the T2 uh, patient. In case of T3, uh, re resection was performed in 60 patients with the gold bladder resection in 12 patients, the rare resection of segment 4 and 5 in 38 patients. A rare resection increased the 5% uh, overall survival from 0 to 19% with no difference uh, between the two kinds of resection. So for this kind of uh, for this kind of patient in which we have T3 tumor or T4 tumor, there is no uh, difference uh, mm, with the potential benefit for T3 patient and uh, not demonstrated benefit for T4 patient. So which is the French experience about the resection of the uh, port site. So we have uh, um, in all the French series 54 patients who had a uh, resection of the trocar uh, port site. And in this series, uh, we see that there is a, a resection for patients who underwent mm, to the resection of, uh, of the port site at 77% uh, one year, 58 at three years, and, and 21 at five years, compared to one where there was no resection, who had the one year overall survival at 78%, uh, three years at 55, and five years at 32%. So no difference was detected between. Uh, the resection or not. So if we consider the algorithm of, uh, for the management of this pathology, we have, if we have an intraoperative diagnosis, if we have the possibility to have the diagnosis uh, intraoperatively uh, with the frozen specimen analyzed, we can uh, identify two categories, we're resectable patient, non-resectable patient, and uh, uh, it varies from the uh, discover on the final pathology of the surgical specimen and in function of uh, the oncological state of the lesion we can have resection on a resectable patient. So in conclusion, uh, it, uh, the gallbladder cancers that were prognosis with the reoperability in T1B, T2 and T3 as soon as possible. If uh, we have no positive, it's not a contraindication to resection, there is no difference between segmentectomy 4-5 uh, or gallbladder resection. And the routine resection of common bile duct is not mandatory, but it is necessary just in case of the invasion of the cystic duct. Um, the portraised uh, resection is not mandatory. Thank you.